Hey everybody, we're out camping in uh, Glen Rose at Dinosaur Valley State Park. And today we're going to be making a chicken burrito bowl in my three quart Instapot. So stick around. Right, tonight for dinner we're going to have chicken burrito bowls and I thought it might be fun to show y'all how we actually cook in the Instapot. Uh, I used to have a six quart Instapot and when we went on the road we decided that we needed to scale down since there's just two of us and we went with the three quart. Well there's not a lot of recipes out there for a three quart Instapot and so you have to know how to kind of adjust your six quart recipes, eight quart recipes to make them work for the three quart. I have found from most, if you will just cut everything in half, except the time. The time remains almost the same. Uh, you don't have to do hardly any adjusting to the, si to the time, because the time is based on the amount of food that you have in the Instapot to the fill line. So as you half most of your stuff, then it should come out correct. Now here comes the, the hard part. Okay, you say you need a half of a can of, ro of uh, black beans. Well, what do you do with the other half of a can? Put it in a Ziploc bag uh, and put it in the refrigerator. And then the following week, you already have some ingredients to either make the same recipe or a different variety of the recipe. Say, like, for example, uh, you might do a chicken tortilla soup with a lot of the same ingredients. So let's go ahead and let's dive right into this. All right, so for those of you who are familiar with an Instapot, it's a pressure cooker. There's a lot of varieties on the market. Uh, this one is the actual Instant Pot. Um, we're going to be using the manual button, so most of them have that. So if you don't have an Instapot, this should work for you as well. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to put just a little, this is a one and an eighth cup of chicken stock. Now, if you're doing a six quart, a six quart one, then you would make it the full uh, two and uh, a fourth cups. But we're only going to do half of that. So if you've got a six quart, just take all of this and double it, except for the time. The time remains the same. I'm going to put just a little bit of this uh, one and an eighth cup of chicken stock on the bottom of the pan. Then I'm going to layer the chicken in. These are thighs. You can use chicken breast. You can use whatever you would like to use that works for you. All right, I'm going to put these in. I'm going to ask um, Bill to turn it off so I can go wash my hands for the next step. Now we are ready for the second layer. The chicken in there. And so we're going to take the taco seasoning and we only need about a half of this so we can have the other half the next time we want to do something that requires a taco seasoning. And you're just going to sprinkle it on the top of the chicken. Actually, let's do a little more. I think it's not quite half of a half yet. Okay, that should do it. Now our next layer is going to be the vegetables. So I have about a half a cup of frozen corn. You can do a half a can of uh, sweet corn, whatever you want. I just happen to use frozen because it's easier uh, for when I save it. So I'll put half of that. I'll put that whole thing in because I'd already figured it. Now I have drained and rinsed some black beans. I'm only going to put half of these rinsed and drained black beans into the pot on this layer. All right, that's about half. I'm also going to add to this layer about a half a can of uh, Rotel tomatoes. Okay, and that completes that layer. The next layer is going to be our raw vegetables, and that's going to be our onions and our bell pepper. Now you can use whatever color bell pepper you want. You can use red and green. If you've got a six quart, I'd say do uh, if you're doing it with a six quart, I'd do, uh, say do a green one, a red one, whatever, and just a medium size. Now we're doing the three quart, so I just went ahead and chose a color. I went with green, um, and I'm going to put a medium bell pepper and about half of a medium onion in there. And that's going to go as a layer. Now 
Now this next thing is completely optional. I had a tomato and I it was getting it's getting toward the end of its life. So I'm gonna go ahead and add this tomato right on top of that rotel layer. Just so that we don't waste a tomato. But that's I'm gonna use Uncle uh, Ben's uh, long grain wild rice. You can use regular rice, uh, long grain rice here. And now I'm gonna add this rice in here. All right, so there you go. Let me show what that looks like. All right. Now I'm gonna take the rest of the chicken stock and I am gonna pour that into it trying to make sure that my rice is uh, completely submerged in it. And then it gets in there. Now, so there we go. Our rice is in there, submerged. All right, so now I've closed it up. I've made sure that it's on sealing. I'm gonna put it on pressure cook and then I'm going to add 10 minutes to the time. Once it starts, it's going to cook, once the steam builds up, it'll cook for 10 minutes. It's probably going to take about 10 minutes for the steam to build up, 10 minutes to cook, and then you want to let it do a slow release. And that means that when it says L, you wait for it to say L10 because it's sitting on low, and it's, it's going to hit L10. When it does, uh, it's going to be time to release the uh, pressure and I am simply if you're a little bit afraid of this up here I normally just flip it but if you're new to it and you're a little bit afraid of it take a pay, uh, take a, cl a cloth throw it over the top it'll also help protect your cabinets so that if that has to, if you're worried about your cabinetry and you're worried that steam is going to come up here and damage it just throw a cup tail over the top of it it won't hurt anything until you get used to it if the idea of that doesn't bother you and you don't mind just hitting it with your finger or using um, a spoon to do it, that's fine as well. So now it's at 10. So I, it's not going to, once you let it go down on slow release, it is not going to have as much steam come out of it as it would if you were doing a, a, a quick release. There you go. See, it helps contain some of the steam. There will be some steam that still will come out through that. And I'm going to get that chicken out. I'm going to shred the chicken. And there's one. There's the other big piece. And now I can just kind of stir the rest of this around. So now we don't need the layers anymore. <laughs> My uh, board is going crazy over here. Chicken is shredded to the degree that you want it. You put it back in here. All right, I'm going to stir it all together. Now here's the deal with this. Because of the rice, you're not sure, if you're not exactly sure how much of it actually got submerged into the chicken stock, then just set your lid back on. Let it sit for about five minutes. And then whatever rice didn't get cooked will finish cooking just on the residual heat that's in there. If you haven't subscribed yet, we would sure love for you to become a member of our Nomad family and have you join us on our adventures. We have a lot more cooking, a lot more adventures, a lot more traveling to do, uh, and we'd love to share it with you. So hit the subscribe button and the little bell to be notified whenever we release a new video. Okay, so it has set for five minutes, and any real rice that wasn't fully cooked should should be just fine now. So now you've got your your uh, chicken burrito bowl, 
and I'm going to spoon some up into these bowls and then we've got some some options here some salsa some sour cream some cheese some avocado some pico de gallo that you could put on if you wanted a little lime you could put that on it's there. a good healthy dinner for you and your family and there's a little left over for lunch tomorrow. So, there you go.